thank you all for attending this webinar. So, and welcome. Um, my name is Desmond Byrne, and I'm responsible for customer support at RX Mobility. Um, I'm not sure where all you guys are based, but I'm I'm based in Cork in, in the Republic of Ireland. I'm looking out, and it's a beautiful sunny day, and I hope you're having a great day where you are now. So, by way of thanks, we have all attendees to this to this webinar a free video to help with search engine marketing using YouTube. We will distribute your video about 10 days after this particular webinar. Uh, the video itself will be customized and branded to your pharmacy. This particular webinar is all very hands-on and assumes nothing. Um, so we're going to start on, on, a, on, a, on a sort of a basic level. So firstly, let me tell you a little bit about RX Mobility. RX Mobility is a refill patient engagement and marketing tool for compounding pharmacies and is provided exclusively to PCCA members. RX Mobility integrates with your PK dispensing software. With the RX Mobility mobile app, you can service and tether patients in your core markets and target new patients in adjacent markets. RX Mobility automatically takes refill and other pertinent information from PK software. It uses that information to remind patients to refill a script, to report on refill compliance, and to communicate to the patient when a script has been dispensed. It does this automatically without any intervention by the pharmacist. RX Mobility works because it gives you a tool to help patient, to help counter patient behaviors such as forgetfulness and procrastination. So to give you a sense of what we want to do with this webinar series through 216 and 217, is that we want to have a series of educational webinars focused on digital marketing and using digital tools to increase revenue for your compounding pharmacies. All webinar attendees and RX Mobility customers will receive video, free videos or free other assets, digital assets, which will be associated with the webinar. The idea is that you get a free digital asset that you can implement the lessons learned. So to give you a sense of the type of video that we're going to show you or going to create for you, um, Jason, you just might place the video, play the video, please. Compounding is the creation of a pharmaceutical preparation, a drug, by a licensed pharmacist to meet the unique needs of an individual patient when commercially available drugs do not meet those needs. A compounding pharmacist customizes the medications to suit. Drug strength or dosage can be adjusted. Flavors added to make it more palatable for a child. The drug can be reformulated to exclude an unwanted, non-essential ingredient, such as gluten. The form of the medication can be changed for patients who have difficulty swallowing. Another reason for compounding is drug shortages. In the last few years, there has been an upsurge in large-scale, important drugs being in shortage for extended periods. Compounding pharmacies bridge the gap and prepare medications when shortages arise or drugs are discontinued. When looking for a compounding pharmacy, check that the pharmacy is in good standing with its state board of pharmacy, uses FDA-approved suppliers, is knowledgeable, and follows USP 795 and USP 797 guidelines when compounding. Okay, thank you very much, Jason. So that gives you a sense of the type of video and the type of video, the assets that we will be creating. Um, it's in this particular instance, you've seen it created for a PWRX a pharmacy. That's a sort of a dummy pharmacy that we've created just to uh, show the type of assets that we'll be uh, using. So the idea is that you get to use, you use this video to get conser con conversant with the basics of video marketing, YouTube, and then Facebook for sharing. So the type of topics that we're going to have over the next number of months are things like marketing to increase your bioidentical HRT business, market, marketing and, and, and veterinary, uh, compounding for health, for kids, uh, men's health. So we're, we're going to really concentrate on, on digital marketing, patient acquisition, and, and increasing revenue from existing patients using these um, digital tools. And we're going to be spreading this out. We're going to do one every two months uh, for the next uh, 14 to, to 16 months. So there's about eight of them. And for each of them, we'll have some content that we'll create for you and that we'll send to everybody who participates. So um, for today, what we're going to do is we're going to start simple and we're just going to set up a um, YouTube account, a YouTube channel. 
and we're going to through the basics of how to set up a YouTube um, channel properly. Then we're going to go into using the video that we give you to increase uh, Google traffic using what we call long tail keywords. And don't mind the term so much, long tail keywords are, are means that keywords that are not searched for that frequently. And so they're at the end of a long tail. So instead of um, say a common keyword might be pharmacy, but pharmacy is, uh, is very generic and it doesn't really indicate you know, intent on the behalf of the, the patient. You may want to have something like compounding pharmacy near me or compounding pharmacy in Houston or I'm looking for a compounding pharmacy. They're the type of long tail keywords I'm talking about. And we'll go into that in a little bit in a few minutes. Then there's to increase your visibility using a video on your Facebook page. So how do you actually increase visibility of your, of your business and your pharmacy using a Facebook? And finally, we'll, we'll sort of touch on promoting your business on Facebook a little bit and specifically uh, promoting um, your, your Facebook pages um, uh, to, to, to your patients and to people who like you. So that's sort of what we're going to cover today. And firstly, let me start by talking about the rise of online video. Video has become hugely accessible and is thus used for entertainment, education, information, and advertising. Google says that over 300 million hours of video are watched every single day on YouTube. And it, it, it isn't just fun videos like the cat at my shoe or something. An, an awful lot of it is about business, education, and, and products. I'm sure I know I've looked up YouTube on how to's or trying to figure things out for myself. I look at it you know, frequently enough to do stuff and try to figure out something that I'm not conversant with. And so those 300 million hours, you know, yeah, some of it's fun, but a lot of it's very focused on business as well. And there are several ways to reach customers via video. Firstly, there, there's share your videos uh, on websites like YouTube, and that really is the number one. There's other tools like uh, Vimeo uh, and others, but really YouTube is the gorilla in the area. You could also embed videos into your own website. And by the way, when we give you these videos, you can, you can do with them what you please. Um, they're royalty license free. You can upload them to your website. They're in high definition. You can put them on a screen in the pharmacy if you'd like. And then the third way to reach uh, consumers via video is to buy advertising space in other, video, in, in other people's videos. But really what we're gonna do today is we're gonna focus on websites like YouTube. So I'm just going to pull out of the PowerPoint for a minute, and I'm going to click on a YouTube and uh, just show you this YouTube. Now, I haven't set up YouTube channel yet on this subscription. Um, what I have done, though, is I've set up an account. Um, so I've created a Gmail account. It's called pwrx4pharmacy at gmail.com. And I've just set that up for demonstration purposes um, today. So when you when you log into YouTube with your with your Gmail account, it, it looks like this. I mean, it's not populated with anything, and I've opened it up in a in a browser Firefox that I rarely use, so that it's not populated or pre-populated with any of the things that I I will be looking at. On the top left hand side, you click on the My Channel button, which is up here on the top left, and that starts the whole process of setting up your your actual channel. So I'm going to use YouTube, not as my name, but I'm going to say PWRX4 and pharmacy. And pharmacy. And I'm going to create that channel. Now I'm only going to create one channel for one account. You can create multiple channels by account if you, if you wish to do that. But just for the sake of today, it's just going to be one particular channel. So um, this is what it looks like, and, and this is where we are, we are starting off. So the, um, the first thing I've got to do is to upload uh, channel icons and channel art and, and other such information. And for uh, those of you who are customers of RX Mobility, we create a lot of these type of assets for you. Um, you will know that we have a folder that we share with you on a persistent basis, which contains a lot of stuff. Um, but we do create channel art, such as for YouTube as well. So let's just add channel art um, for this particular pharmacy. And I'm going to upload um, something from my computer. And I'm just going to pick one here called channel four and open it. This will upload the actual image to YouTube. Um, and if I look at it, I can see what it's going to look like on a desktop. I can see what it's going to look like on TV, a mobile device. I can see it somewhat. I hope you can see it. 
I want to adjust it a little bit because it doesn't look 100% perfect on a mobile device. And I'm just going to adjust this over a little bit here. And I'm going to select that. And it's going to save that and it's going to upload it to the, to the channel preview. So um, because I'm using two browsers, two windows, it's going to be slightly different. But there you are. I've just, just reloaded the field and you can see there is my, my graphic. And then I've got to um, upload an icon. And I do that, it connects into the actual channel icon, connects into uh, Google, your Google Plus account, which is automatically created when you, when, you, um, when you set it up a Google account. And I'm just going to use a profile image like this and open that and upload that. And that's pretty much it for actually setting up the, the actual channel. It, it, it is literally that simple. Um, that will upload a little in a little bit into the channel. It takes a, you know some minutes for uh, Google to actually upload that in there. And then the next thing I want to do is to have a channel you know description. And the channel description is about your it's about your business. So PWRX is a uh, compounding only uh, pharmacy servicing its customers. I won't put a specific location, but a, um, you get the idea. You put whatever text you want in to describe the channel um, that you want to describe yourself, describe your business, and describe the channel and what the channel is all about. This channel is for educational, is for educational purposes. And then click done. So that's sort of the, the aesthetics of the channel actually created. Um, but there are a couple of things that have to be done to actually uh, verify the channel and connect it to your website. And if I go over to my icon here on the top right hand side of the screen, and I'll just click on that, then I'm going to click on this thing called uh, Creator Studio. Okay, so just go up to the icon on the top right of the screen and click on Creator Studio. When I click on Creator Studio, it's going to open up a lot of dashboard and uh, information about the actual channel and I'm going to click down on here on the channel icon on the bottom on the left hand side and there's a couple of things when you're setting up your actual YouTube um, channel and you set it up with a brand new email account so it's either a, a new uh, Gmail account um, or an, an another type of email account, so not a Gmail account, then initially it will not be verified. And you have to verify it. Now, because I previously set up the pwrx4 at gmail.com uh, email address and verified it, this now shows up at verified, but you have to do this. So you go on to channel, and it will say, um, uh, please verify on the button instead of verified. And what you do is you put in your cell phone number, and it'll send you a six-digit PIN, and uh, the six-digit PIN will come onto your cell phone number. You take that number, write it down, and you enter it into a field in here and press verify. And then pretty much immediately, it'll just be verified. And I just did that in advance of this session so that we wouldn't have, you know, I wouldn't be delayed with, with, with anything. So that's one thing that you must, you must actually do is to verify the account. And that's only if you've got no new, uh, it's, it's a new Gmail uh, email address. Once you have verified, um, you you have the ability to link your your website to your YouTube channel, and what you do for that is you click down here on Advanced. So again, just below Channel, you click on Advanced. I mean, the, the, you you gotta link your YouTube channel into your website, otherwise, you know, they're, they're separate and nobody knows that they're actually linked in any way. So you gotta do this. Now, this is a little bit more complex. Uh, unfortunately, and it does require a little bit of, of, of help uh, from your actual um, web developer. But when you click on um, the advance and you associate a website, and just click down here. This is one. I don't see it coming up. Um, so we're going to associate a website. Basically what it does is you associate your website in here. I don't see it coming up. Maybe it's something I didn't do when I set it up the channel a few minutes ago. But you, um, you associate your website 
and you follow the H. There's a recommend. There's a, there's a variety of different recommendations to do this, but the one to to do this is the what's called the HTML recommended method. And there's a small piece of code, and you ask your developer for your website to insert the HTML code in your website. And once that's done, then the actual channel, the YouTube channel, and your website are linked. Okay. So any any uh, questions on that at this point? Everyone okay? I don't see anything coming up, so I'll keep going. All right, then. So I'm just going to go back up to another channel that I'd set up, um, and it's called PWRX Pharmacy. You can see it's got the same type of uh, information with the description. It, PWRX is a compounding-only pharmacy dedicated to patients in this metro area. So what I'm going to do is to upload a, a video, um, and the video I'm going to upload is the, the one that we just showed you a few minutes ago. And that's a pretty big video, so it's going to take a, a couple of minutes to do that. But while we're uploading, we'll do something else related to the search engine terms. So um, there's a couple of options when you're uploading a video. There's public, unlisted, and private. Now, pretty much everything I think you'd want to be doing is related to public, i.e. anybody uh, can find you. It's indexed and it's visible by anybody. Unlisted means that it's a, it's a public video, but there's nobody searching for it, and it's not listed in any of the search engines. And then private means it's private only uh, to your channel. So I'm going to assume it's public that we're going to upload uh, in here. So I just click on the arrow button here to upload, and I'm going to click on my compounding video, and I'm going to open it. Okay, so that's going to start uh, uploading the details behind the actual video. And you can see it's uploading. Uh, please keep this page, and then we'll publish it now in a minute when we're ready to publish it. First thing to do is a description. So one of the things that I'll give you when we get the video done for you is I'll be giving you some content related to the actual um, the actual video itself. So I'm just going to put a short description in here. And that's going to be my description for the actual video. And I might say it's, um, I might call the actual video compounding, uh, compounding um, medications by PWRX Pharmacy. So I'm just going to call it that. So I haven't tagged it yet. And the tagging is what's, it was what's really important. And the tagging is where you link it to the actual search uh, keywords that you want to get recognized for. So I'm going to open up a, a, a another um, another uh, tab here, and it's called Moz. So what Moz is is a way to find uh, keywords that um, relate to your business, and it is you, you can pay for this or you can just sign you can look at it for free so they allow you to do a number of keyword searches per day you know it's it's a handful it's something like less than 10 but it's it's sort of all you'd need um uh, to start off looking for keywords for your partic for this particular uh, video and if you know anyone has any trouble afterwards i'd be more than happy to 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 walk them uh, through this and of course, I have an account, so I can search for I think it's 5,000 keywords or something. So we can go spend a bit more time on it if necessary. So what I'm going to do is I want to look for long tail keywords that I want to associate with my business. And what long tail sort of means is uncommon, uncommon searches, and they usually indicate a sort of an intent on behalf of the searcher. So like for example, it doesn't mean if I just put in pharmacy, that you know that doesn't really indicate you know, anything. Um, it could be a high school student uh, doing a project on pharmacies. Um, it could be anything. Um, whereas if I, if I have a sort of a, if I sort of get a term that I feel indicates intent on behalf of um, the actual, um, the, the patient in this case, then that's a much better keyword to get. And they tend to be long tail, long tail meaning there's an intention on the on, an intent on the behalf of the actual uh, patient or your customer, and also the fact that they're easier to rank for because there's a lot of words associated for them and there's not a lot a lot of people competing for them. So I'm going to just look at a couple of um, uh, different keywords related to PWRX Pharmacy. Now PWRX Pharmacy, uh, a dummy pharmacy, is located in Sugarland, which is just a I guess a suburb of of Houston in Texas. So um, I put in uh, compounding pharmacy here as as an as a search term, 
into uh, Moz. And you can see that on a monthly basis that there's somewhere between 11,500 and 30,000 searches for compounding pharmacies in the United States. And there's, there's a couple of things which are you know, in, useful to look at this. One is that um, it's, you know, this, these, there's difficulty ranking and opportunity ranking. Difficulty is, starts at zero and, and goes up to 100. At, at zero, you can rank really easily. At 100, you know, it's nearly impossible to rank for it. But here it's 56, so it's, it's not a, too difficult to actually rank for the term compounding pharmacy. It's, it's midway through. And then the opportunity sort of uh, links all of the other uh, click-through uh, terms or click-through related to the actual difficulty. So there's a good opportunity to get click-through related to that particular search term. And if I look at more of the details associated with it, um, you will look at the keyword suggestions, and they're coming back with compounding pharmacy near me, find a compounding pharmacy, compounding pharmacy association. And you can see it's going to load some some um, some volume associated with the actual search volume. And uh, now this morning when I was checking this out, I saw that Moz wasn't coming back with, you know, it's still loading these volumes. But I know, for example, the compounding pharmacy near me is it ranks about uh, 500 to 1,000 terms uh, per month. So it's, it's a pretty good term. And then if you look at the, um, the um, search engine result page, rank, then you will see that there are actually some companies who rank for this term already. So uh, PCCA, um, uh, the FDA, and Wikipedia. A couple of things just to highlight about these um, uh, individual companies who are ranking. Uh, two things. One is page authority and domain authority, so PA and DA. Domain authority means how much ranking or how much credence that Google actually gives to the domain, uh, your domain, so whatever your domain name is. So, for example, a score of 100 is the maximum credibility it can offer, and Wikipedia gets 100. Facebook 100, Google itself 100, but that's it. I mean, that's there's a handful of companies that are going to get that sort of uh, domain authority ranking. Even the FDA is only on 97. And then page authority means the actual ranking of the page. What is the authoritative ranking of this particular page? Um, and again, it's 0 to 100. And so you can have a very high uh, domain authority, like Yelp would have a very high domain authority for local search but it would have a very, very low page authority for local search, um, by way of example. So there's a, there's a good example of a compounding pharmacy. But I'm going to be more specific, and I'm going to put a term in related to compounding pharmacy in Houston. And it's going to come back, and it's going to come back and say, okay, so there's 200 to 500 searches for compounding pharmacy in Houston. The difficulty is actually, uh, it's actually relatively low, um, so it'd be easy to get ranked for it. There's a huge opportunity to get clicked through because when, what uh, Moz is telling us is that if people are searching for compounding and pharmacy in Houston, they're doing it with intent. Um, we can already see some of the suggestions that they have here in terms of search engine um, keyword suggestions, compounding pharmacy, Houston Medical Center. They're not giving me back data related to that, but here's one here, compounding pharmacy, Houston, Texas, 11 to 50. So there's another keyword uh, indication. And the actual, the Google search engine results page rankings, there's already a couple of pages being ranked for it. So there's a couple of uh, pharmacies here already ranking for it. And you can click on it and see the full analysis, or we can see the 100 suggestions that they're gonna use, they're gonna suggest. So if we click on the, the 1000 suggestions, here you are, compounding pharmacy Houston, 201 to 500 uh, searches per month, and so on, you can go through them. And list them, and you can do this. You can do this yourself separately, but it's moz.com, and just do the free search, and you'll have a certain number of free searches that you can do um, for um, a, a period of time. So um, I'm going to pick the Google, you know, the keywords, um, and you you can go, sort of get a sense of what you're what's what's happening here in terms of the keywords associated with the video, because what I want to do now is I'm going to pick keywords, and I want to associate them with the video that I've just uploaded. Um, and in this case, I'm actually going to pick a compounding pharmacy in Houston. Okay, so let's just go back to my video here, and I'm going to put in my keywords: compounding pharmacy and Houston. They're my they're my keywords. 
I'm going to pick a thumbnail, and then I'm ready to go publish. One thing to highlight for you, just when I publish that, um, when I publish that, there's a couple of things I'm going to get from YouTube. I'm going to get this URL. That's my unique URL for this particular image, uh, for this particular video, sorry. And um, I can use that, uh, and it's a persistent URL. It's, it's available all the time. Once this video is always there on that channel, that's a persistent URL uh, web link to your video. So you can use that on your website. Um, you can use it in Facebook, and we're going to do that in a few minutes. You can use it on email campaigns um, and in, in various other areas. And it sort of is advisable to use that link when embedding it because what you want to be doing is you want people to be viewing, viewing this video on YouTube so that you get ranked for Google. You don't want them to be looking at the video in some other location that's been uploaded because you're not going to get ranked for Google. You want them to actually click on that link and, and view the video. There's also the ability in embed code. And the embed code is sort of a slightly more complex in that it basically allows you to embed the actual video in your website in a particular way. So it says the height of the video is 560 pixels high. Um, sorry, the width is 560 pixels uh, wide. The height is 315 pixels um, uh, height. But the, the most important one for us is going to be this particular URL here. And I'm just going to copy and paste that because I'm going to use it in a in a few minutes. So that's it. I've, I've uploaded my, my video. Um, I've picked my search engine keywords, um, compounding pharmacy Houston. It, it, it's a good ranking because, yeah, it's not, it's not millions, it's not tens of thousands, but you know what? It's 200 to 500 searches every single month. And if you're in the Houston area, that's, that's a pretty good result to have. You get a couple of those people clicking through to your, to your pharmacy and buying from you, and you can do the math on, on, on what sort of revenue you're going to get out of that. So that's the actual, that's the, actual the, the video part of it and how we've uploaded to the, the video to YouTube and done the search engine piece of it. So the next thing is really important because that's the mechanics of the YouTube, but you've got to get people looking at the video so that so that Google will actually see people are actually looking at this video and you know what it ranks it makes it makes sense I got a Google thinks to itself I got I got to rank this video so a couple of things to do and you know it's only simple simple things um, you will have um, patient email list and you saw I copied and pasted that URL a minute ago and you know whatever your patient email list is you just say whatever whatever you want to say to them. Uh, in terms of, um, you know, we have a very, a very interesting new video on compounding. Please click on this link to view. Um, you can send it to your friends, colleagues. I mean, really all at this point in time you're trying to get is you're trying to get ranking for that video with those search engine terms. So you just won't get people clicking on the video, really. Ideally, though, you'll ultimately send it to your, to your, your patient customer base uh, and get them to click on it and view it and see what compounding is, 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 is all about or a little bit more about what compounding is all about send that out to them and once that gets sent out they can click on it and once they click on it google recognizes that and recognizes the fact that you've associated certain keywords with it that you've put a certain description associated with it in the video and it will start to rank you for those keywords so that's that's important to actually um uh, do that um to actually start people get people viewing it so that's the first thing uh, to look at in terms of um, doing the actual sharing the video and getting people to use it. So the second place that we're going to look at, and this brings us out of YouTube and a little bit into, um, into Facebook. So I've basically set up a PWRX Pharmacy page, Facebook page a couple of uh, days ago. And uh, PWRX, as I said, is a dummy pharmacy. It's based in Sugarland in Texas. Um, and I've categorized it under medical and health in Facebook. So let's, I'm, I'm not sure what you know, people know about uh, Facebook pages, but basically just think of it as a mini website for your business, but it's hosted on Facebook. And it's really, really easy to set it up, uh, much easier than, than YouTube to an extent. You just click on this little arrow up here and you click on that and you create pages and uh, when you just press on local business or, or place you choose a category and the category is going to be um, 
medical and health, okay? And you put in your address, and and uh, once you put your address in, you get started, and you and you go from there. I'm not, not going to do that right now, um, but that's that's literally as quick as it is to set up a Facebook page. Um, it, it is it is that simple. So um, I'm just going to go back and just in terms of show you the Facebook page that we set up. Uh, the things you also can do is you can set up um, two graphics. There's the icon here, and you just upload a, a graphic associated with it, similar to YouTube, and an, a graphic here associated with your page. And you just um, upload again, uh, simple to upload from from here. So um, once that's done, your your Facebook page is set up. And the key thing about, I guess, Facebook pages is that you can you can have posts that you can share uh, things about your business. You can share videos, photos, and events. So you can see where I'm going with this. Share video, right? And, we, and we'll get to that in a few minutes. But two things first, because there are things that are pertinent to the pharmacy business that are slightly different uh, to say a normal business. Um, so when you post uh, content, um, it appears on a Facebook. Uh, feed plus it may it may show up in someone else's new feed news feed uh, so news feed being that somebody that likes your actual Facebook page uh, Facebook um, um, allows you to boost posts um, so that more people can see it and when you see you might see uh, you'll see down here and I'll go to this in a minute boost post and that's effectively it's advertising um, uh, this is paid for it enables you to target um, People by location, age, range, gender, interests, etc., and and it's and it's very useful in certain in certain times. It's very very useful. And uh, before I go on to that, though, um, I just wanted to go on to Facebook settings and specifically one setting. So just give me a, a minute on that, please. So I'm going to click on settings. There's a lot of different settings that you have related to general messages, attribution, and page roles, and admin and stuff. But one I just want to highlight is related to uh, age restrictions. And you know, by default, your page is shown to everyone. Um, but as a pharmacy, if you intend to advertise on Facebook, you will need to get written approval from Facebook and follow its guidelines for pharmacy. And uh, there is a, there is one restriction that I'm aware of. It's an age restriction. And your page can only be viewed by those of 18 or over if you're going to use Facebook advertising. So um, just be conscious of that if you're going to get into it. Uh, and be conscious of the fact that you've got to register with Facebook. Um, and you've got to get written authority from them. So you'd actually pick 18 and over um, to actually have a restriction to, to actually start advertising with Facebook. Um, another item I just want to show you here, um, uh, besides the, on the settings column, is basically um, the insights. And insights is where you get um, an understanding of how things are actually working for you. And there's a couple of different metrics that they use. There's what's called reach and engagement. So reach, and you know, I've only just set this web, this, this Facebook page up, so I'm not going to have any reach, but basically reach is a good indicator of how well you're getting your product or business name out there and into people's news feed. Um, so if you're sort of a new business, it's a good metric to measure success uh, because you basically, you have to grow your fan base first and capture their attention in order to build a relationship with them. That's what reach is. Then there's engagements. An uh, engagement metric indicates um, in interactions beyond simply just viewing a post. And Facebook defines an engagement as including all views, all clicks, comments, likes, and shares. So um, that's a much more powerful uh, metric in that it gives you a sense of how engaged your actual users are with, um, or your followers are with your content. Um, and as you are more, um, um, and, and it means something very specific for Facebook, which we, we're just going to go into in, in a minute, that that engagement metric, it's important to get it up over time. I'm just going to talk a little bit about tactics to get that up. So um, a couple of things about uh, Facebook uh, pages, just go back. So when I, when I actually do a post in here, on average, Facebook would only post one in 10 of these to your followers' new, news feed. Um, so some followers might get it, some might not. So when you're starting out with this, on average, only one in 10 will actually get uh, into your news, your followers' news feeds. Um, and people don't expect that. 
and 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 then maybe they're sort of expecting that they all get actually to everyone's uh, news feeds, uh, all your followers' news feeds. And yes, that used to be the case to an extent actually a number of years ago. But once pay Facebook went public and started get, had to start making money, then they started changing the actual how they uh, engaged with followers. So on average, Facebook would only post one in ten of your followers, uh, one in ten of your posts to your followers' news feeds. To improve this rate, you got to get your patients to like your posts, because if a patient likes one of your posts, then that patient will start to see an increase in the number of your posts going into his or her newsfeed. As a guideline, you can get as many as one in two of your posts into the uh, newsfeed of your most engaged patients. And in order to sort of start that ball rolling, if, if this is something that you're new to, and, and get sort of that patient engagement. The best thing to do is to actually do something personal. And you know, you're not trying to have a huge reach, but you're just trying to have something personal engagement on a personal post. Um, so it could be it could be anything. It could be a visit of a of a patient. It could be a local event. It could be a store event. It could be really anything, but something that people in your community identify with. And I've just got a small one here that I was I was preparing um, 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 earlier on. And I, just as an example, I'm going to post a, a photo. I'm going to upload it. And I'm just going to say it is, you know, Jane. Just open that. And I'm just going to be, it's, it's, it's a, you know, in this case, it's one of, the, of a baby. And again, if it was a, a parent, you'd have to get the permission to do this. But this is just to give you an idea of the type of personal item that you would look at doing. So, um, you know, baby Jane after her vaccinations okay and i can just uh publish that and and that's it and you know people who know baby jane or see a baby picture and think oh that's cute and then they'll come along and they might just go ahead and they might like that now i can't like it because i'm the moderator of this uh, particular page but they might just go ahead and and, and like that particular uh post so um that's baby jane after vaccinations and that's one way to actually um, increase the actual the patient engagement on your Facebook page. Now there are other options um, to to say um, that Facebook offer you, and they are more advertising based options. And I'm just going to show it to you. And um, I think I put something up earlier on. Here, I put one up earlier on. So here was on a um, on Saturday, September 17th at 10 a.m. We were holding an educational webinar, seminar, seminar on BHRT in our store, who it is for and why you should consider BHRT. So for example, now there's two ways of doing this. I could actually create an event and, and you know, create an event and do it. Um, and which you could also do, or I could create just that post. So in this instance, I've just I've just gone ahead and created this particular post before this webinar. Um, but the thing about the post is, yeah, it's going to go into one in 10 of my followers. But what I really want to be doing maybe is I want to give it a little boost, as they call it. I want to do some a little bit of advertising. So what I could do is I could set up an audience that this would actually suit. And I could, I could set up a custom audience. So I'm going to create an audience here. And I'm going to say it is, uh, I'm going to call it BHRT, and I'm going to call it Women Audience, and maybe somewhere from, um, you know, pick, pick an age that this would be suited to, and um, I'm going to uh, remove Texas, and I'm going to put in um, Sugarland, and it'll come up, Texas, okay. And I will have a radius of maybe, um, I'll leave it at 25 miles. And uh, I might just put in interests that, this, that the people have is maybe wellness, uh, fitness and wellness as an example. Okay. And I'm not sure what this is going to come up with, but I'm going to save that off with and see how many people that we have here. So um, there's my, my, my audience. And if I click down, and I put in a budget of, you know, Facebook allow you to have a minimum budget of a dollar a day. So I could click here and put in, um, you know, I want to run it for a couple of days because we've got the webinar coming up on the 
uh, I think I said the 17th. So if we click it through to the 17th, uh, we'll give it a couple of days. Um, I will spend a dollar 25, and um, the estimated reach of the campaign will be about 1,300 to 3,500 people um, in terms of that campaign. If I boost it, then it'll charge my my card, which I'm not going to do. But if I boost that, that what what will actually happen? So you can see that you can actually use that simple that simple video, that's the page, Facebook page, to very quickly sort of build a page that makes sense that people can engage with, and then using not a lot of money and some just an event in your in your actual um, in your pharmacy, you can actually um, get a lot of traction out there. Uh, for in this case, you know, a say BHRT, if that's a focus for you, then you can see you can get a lot of people that could uh, would actually be um, would be reached via a very inexpensive uh, five dollar Facebook campaign. Um, so I'm not going to boost that. I'm going to cancel it if you don't mind. So um, I'm going to just exit out of that, and that's going to be finished. That. So. Um, a couple of things again about Facebook and boosting things, um, just to go through them. Uh, you will need written approval from Facebook and follow its guidelines for pharmacies. Um, uh, for example, uh, your page will have to, can only be viewed by those 18 or over. One thing about Facebook in terms of advertising, there is one positive in that Facebook advertising, uh, you do not have to register with the, the National Association of Boards of Pharmacy. Uh, with their e-advertiser or what's actually now called their safe program. So normally, if you're doing if you're doing advertising um, from um, uh, Google or from others, then you have to get you have to register with the National Association of Boards of Pharmacy. Um, the e-advertiser program is no longer in being used. They have replaced it with what's called safe. Uh, when you uh, apply under the safe program. It's $925 per submission, so you've got to get the submission right the first time because if you have to submit a second time, it's another $925. Um, that is lower than it used to be. The e-advertiser e approval program was $2,000. But Facebook allows you, you don't have to actually do that for the moment. You don't have to actually register with the National Association of Boards of Pharmacy to actually start this particular uh, program. But So that's the actual um, Facebook overview. Um, so you can see where we're going with this in terms of your actual video, and so I want to get my video out there and share my share my video. I want to um, um, I'm going to copy and paste my you know and go back to the URL for my video, just in case I don't have it. I'm just going to click on that, Command C, and I go back out to. This particular post, and I'm going to just put that in there, and uh, Facebook will automatically pick up the details behind the video. And of course, rather than upload the video to Facebook, which I could do, what I really want to do is I want people to be directed to YouTube to look at the video because I want to get the search engine credits from from Google, uh, the search engine credits associated with the keywords we used earlier on, which was compounding pharmacy Houston. So I just publish that. And and it'll Facebook will save that off, and that's it done. So that's what you do here. It's a YouTube video. You can see all the content we put on earlier on. Compound is a creation of a pharmaceutical preparation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now I'm going to give you that that got text, but by all means, please, please actually modify it for your own business. Uh, you know that it that it's actually more personalized. But the basis of it will be there for you. The video will be there for you. The actual uh, script in the video will be given to you. But you know, personalize it a little bit so it just looks, you know, a little bit, a little bit uh, better. So that's they're the two main ways of of um, of of sharing it. Um, we have found previously that Twitter just doesn't work for um, for pharmacy. It, you know, I'm not even going to cover it because um, it's just too quick. Um, it's just things are moving around too fast. There's, there's too much pace to it, and really, people when they're thinking of their health, they're a bit more settled. They want a bit more time. So Twitter, Twitter just doesn't work, in, and that's been our experience. Um, so let's um, just go back out to the PowerPoint for a minute, and um, let's just have a quick look at what we've done. So summary: we've created a YouTube channel, um, really quickly. 
we have uploaded the free video that we're going to give you, uh, the branded video, what is compounding video. Um, we've searched for relevant keywords, what we call long tail keywords on Moz.com, and we've picked some keywords that suit us and our business. We've tagged the video with those keywords. We've shared the video on email and Facebook, okay, and maybe you know, we talked about boosting video on other Facebook posts, but maybe you boost that video and our other Facebook posts to get people to like and engage with you on Facebook. So that's sort of a summary of what we've um, done uh, so far. And you can sort of see where this is, is headed because, you know, that's, 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 that's you know, all, all really simple. It was, we didn't have to do anything complex to, to start this all off. Uh, you know, of experimenting with it and using it and using the video that we give to you. You know, if, you know, and I'll just show you if things aren't, you know, you're not happy with things on, on Facebook, you know what, I don't like that, the, the particular posts, you know, I can just, um, I can just delete it, you know, if I'm not happy with that, you know, the baby one, for example, they, um, they just, something happened, I can just delete the post and, and it's gone. You know, so you can just delete these posts. So just experiment and play with it. And as you play with it, you'll get more confidence and you get to use it. Um, and and just go back to the PowerPoint again. So you see that summary, those sort of simple, there's some simple basic building blocks, but let, just think about what, what could be done, right? And again, just go back to the BHRT example because I think it is topical for our industry in compounding pharmacy. You know. You might decide that you know I gotta I gotta raise my business profile here in in this sector. Um, and you, you could decide that, and, and I'm not going to be able to give you a specific example for you, but you know, there's a nearby city. It's got no compounding pharmacy, and I pick that as the location. So instead of my hometown location, I pick a I, I pick a nearby city, and I say I'm going to pick a 10 mile radius around that. Again, I put in the demographic that makes sense for BHRT. I add in the interests that these people may have. And you can see that now you've got an ad that's targeting uh, new customers for bioidentical HRT. And of course, from our perspective, you know, if they're in a, if they're in a, a market outside of your, you know, your, 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 your city, then you can use our app to uh, order and refill and remind and engage with them. So you can see how that, 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 that's sort of how you can use these Facebook and these basic tools to actually build up the business uh, for you in uh, areas, uh, specific areas that are of interest to, to you. Um, so that's sort of um, bringing me to the, to the, the actual close of, um, of the actual uh, webinar. I am, I am after with the start of it, we didn't start off so quickly, but I'm after running out of a little bit of time um, to go through a Q&A, um, but if you want to post message, if you want to give me um, messages through, I promise I will answer every single one of the actual messages that are coming through. Um, I have one message here, uh, how do you get consent from Facebook to advertise? So what happens um, is that the actual, uh, when you submit a, a boost, um, Facebook will actually moderate the post and decide can it be actually can it be used or not used, um, and then it goes from there. So um, that's that's the start point for that. And I'll send you more details on that, Kayla, uh, after the webinar. Is there anybody else with any other um, any questions or anything that you'd like to have? Just to say to you that we're going to do this uh, video for you. It's by and large similar to um, what you've seen a little bit earlier on. We have had some feedback from some of the PCCA uh, member pharmacies that they'd like to change it a little bit towards the end, in particular um, uh, as we're talking about the compounding standards, um, the UPC standards. So we're going to actually remove some, some of that content but it will still be a 60 to 80 second video and it will still be very usable um, for you. Um, so I have a, um, another question. Um, how are you integrating with PK software to remind our customers for refills from K? K, what we're doing is um, the uh, PK uh, compounder software, it has a thing called a service bus. 
um, it's a uh, it's an upgrade from uh, PCCA. Um, I'm not exactly too sure what it's called, and I'm not I'm, I'm not sure of the pricing of it. But what happens is is that our app then automatically connects into the uh, PK Compounder using this tool called Service Bus, um, and there's a very simple workflow. A patient puts in their a script number and they also put in their uh, date of birth to verify who they are and once that happens then we download into the app all of the patient's de uh, relevant patient details and once those relevant patient details are in the workflow starts happening automatically. Um, so uh, Kay I can come back to you with a bit more information on that if that's okay because I'm running out of time I hope that's okay for you. Do you have to register with NABP Safe Program to advertise on YouTube? Now that is a good question um, uh, Shana, um, right now to actually do what we just did, no, right? Um, but my understanding is is that yes, you do have to uh, register with the program to actually advertise. So if you're advertising on YouTube um, and you're using um, other other people's videos uh, to advertise, so you're buying advertising space on other people's videos, then yes you must do that but I will verify that for you I know absolutely sure and positive that if you're using Google AdWords then yes you've got to register with the NABP a safe program um, so good question thank you is there any other questions from other people um, have I given you enough to think about um, if you need me to do um, if you would be so kind to everybody as to we will look for your actual logos for your pharmacy on uh, your website. Um, but if you would be so kind to actually send a high resolution version of your logo, uh, it would make our job a little bit easier to create the video. And the email address is rxmobilityapp at gmail.com. So just send the, the um, just send it through to rxmobilityapp at gmail.com dot com and we will be we will create the videos as I said it'll take about uh, a week to ten days and we will circulate them uh, uh, to you so Dwayne um, I just got a question uh, from you I had a refusal from Facebook to allow me to boost a post regarding saliva test kits available at our pharmacy it included a video how to use the saliva kit how can I get this approved it was a discovery piece not promotion of a drug it might have been related to the age of consent um, setting on the actual on your Facebook page because the age of consent setting must be over 18 in order to promote or boost an actual post. Um, there are other things that Facebook do not allow uh, to be boosted and um, there are specific things that they don't allow but I, from your question I do not see that it would actually stop you boosting that particular post. Okay Dwayne thank you. Um, um, if that is not the case, please come back to me and just email me, des at rxmobilityapp at gmail.com. Or sorry, des, yeah, des at rxmobilityapp.com, uh, and I will do my best to answer it and try to figure it out for you. If there's any other questions, anybody, because I'm just running out of time here. Um, as I said, if you want to ask something after this event, uh, please, please let me know. I'll do my best to answer everything. Um, if you'd like some follow-up help about the video and YouTube, let us know. We'll distribute the video, uh, upload it, and as I said, please send us your logo as high definition as you have, so high resolution as you have, to rxmobilityapp at gmail.com or des at, at rxmobilityapp.com. Okay, if there's no other questions, folks, then I thank you very much for your time. I hope this of has been of benefit to you all and um, uh, thank you uh, thank you for your time and thank you for listening to our webinar thank you